Great Debaters Contest is powered by Blaze, by Safaricom, the Youth Network. Welcome to the Kisumu edition of the Great Debaters Contest. The youngest, brightest minds of this region are with us. I am your host, Mariam Bishar. And I am Austin Yumbok. The motion today is internationally constituted bodies should be assigned to combat corruption globally. There is Nyambaria High School going against Homo Bay School. Who will be the victor, Mariam? They'll answer that question. <laughs> Proposal number one, you have three minutes. Kodeko Barak, Homo Bay School. I stand firmly to affirm the vitality of the motion of today which states international instituted bodies should be assigned to combat corruption globally. International constituted bodies. These are institutions that have merged to form, inst to form an organization that tries to combat corruption. And corruption, this is an act by an individual, state, or an entity to use ambiguous, dubious, and constitutional means for personal gains at the expense of others, driven by the fact that such people or states are egocentric globally. When I speak of something global, I'm talking about something worldwide, universal. From Tokyo, Japan, to Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, from Kenya, Nairobi, to Paris in London. That is the meaning of global. I'd like also to say that corruption may manifest itself in various ways. We have the economic part of corruption, the social part of corruption, and to make it worse is the part that is now a political part of corruption. My first affirmatory statement of today is that I'd stand by the motion of today by saying that definitely when we uphold internationally instituted bodies to curb corruption, therefore, one, there will be limited interference by the sitting governments. Yes, corruption is the rot in the human conscience. Corruption is a song we are singing today. It is a song in each and everyone's mind. And it has become a norma that no one gives a damn about. To make it worse, our leaders' powerful names are mentioned and are involved in corruption. Remember, the leaders try to use their powers to thin the capital to the corruption, corruption to the corrupt anti-corruption groups that try to unearth their evil deeds. By this, they will lack funds in that the investigations will not come out to make us green about the details of whatever that transpired. And as I conclude, because conclude I must, listen to Mother Teresa of Calcutta. She says, when you walk into a dark room, behold, do not complain about the light, but light up your candle and let your neighbor light up their candles and the whole room will be consumed in light. Let the light of international bodies shine to consume corruption's darkness. Thank you. Opposition, you have three minutes for your opening statement. Constantly rebuke evil. Patiently suffer for truth's sake. In the words of Nelson Mandela, do I stand here today and say that the internationally considered bodies have failed. Hence, they should not be given any chance to fight corruption within the globe. Internationally considered bodies, these are organizations of people formed legally and officially to perform a specific task assigned this to be given a mandate or a particular responsibility to perform a function. Combat, this is to prevent something that is evil and illegal from happening. Corruption, this is the fundamental acts or processes that occur in an office by the officers that hold the office therein. Global, this is one that involves the whole world. Why do I say that the international body should not be allowed? International body like the FFT, that is the Financial Action Task Force, it has failed. It deals with money laundering. But when you, go, but when you read the Times Magazine of 2013, uh, August, it says this way, that in its report in the UN Assembly, it has failed to combat, to combat money laundering over 100 nations. Well, why should we give such, an, an, why should we give such a body it's a mandate to perform or to combat corruption? Don't we have trust in, upon our own Bodies, this brings me to our own sovereignty and authority. Kenya is a sovereign state because the sovereignty is upon its people and authority. This motion tries to tell me that 
we should not we should not we should be undermining our own sovereignty we have no trust in our government bodies why look at this in 1953 that is 55 years before 2013 six kenyans were prosecuted in kapenguria hence they were called the kapenguria six they were prosecuted by the whites in our in our own soil what about our sovereignty? What about our independence? Then what is the essence of our judicial systems? My friend, this is undermining our own sovereignty. And again, in the words of Fres Girard, he says that, show me your hero and I will write down your, your tragedy. Friends, look at the case of the ICC. We've take, we took it to the international court, but it failed due to witness interference and also lack of evidence. Friends, these courts are doing away with our with our independence. Hence, it will lead to neocolonialism. What is neocolonialism? This is the act or controlling or influencing a state politically due to political and economic powers. These governments, they want something in hand or in return. Their, their sole purpose is not service, but self-benefit. Hence, they become egocentric, and that is corruption in essence. When I entered this room, I had my sister in mind, but, and I saw Barack. I saw him as a prospective husband for my own sister, but I, uh, my heart is grieving. Why? Because when they get the marriage, will, they involve, will he involve the outside party to, to, to solve it, internal problems? A thought process. Thank you. We'll hear rebuttals now, beginning with the proposing team. You have three minutes. People have been given ability to look, but the power to see a great thing is vested in the brain. Look and see but don't look to look. Amolo Bonface from Homer Bay School. I want to dispute the sentiment made by my opponent in a simple cliche by saying that it is easy to forgive a child who ran away from the darkness, but the tragedy of life is when men run away from light. I support the motion that internationally constituted bodies should be assigned to combat corruption globally. You know, when we talk about international constituted body, it simply means that uh, these locally or nationally constituted bodies have got a lot of loopholes or have got a lot of weaknesses. That's why we want, we are, we, we are, we are supporting the international constituted bodies to chip in and combat corruption. My first point, there, are, there is this aspect of credibility of the locally or, na or national constituted bodies. Why do I say this? We find that the most, most, most of the citizens, or most of the, of the Kenyans, you realize that they lose that public interest. Give a case study of Kenya. We talk about the uh, anti ethic, Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. When we look into it, we know, and everybody know about the NYS saga, or the NYS scandal. If it was dug deep, we realize that the Ethic and Anti-Corruption Commission could not unearth all this aspect. And everybody is asking, and this one is, is being heard from the lip of all, that where has this matter gone? Where is this matter for the moment? Remember, these Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission in Kenya are like toothless dogs. And what can toothless dogs do? It means that if you want to become a giant, work with giants. But if you want to become more than giant, climb on their shoulders, and these are the internationally constituted bodies. Into my second point, the independence of international constituted body is guaranteed. Why do I say so? A case study of Gambia, where ECOWAS had to intervene and resolve the political crisis, whereby the, the, the winning candidate, the candidate who won, was legally and allowed to, to rule the country. For example, we realized that this one, is, is inverse to locally or nationally constituted bodies. For example, this Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, we realize that uh, whenever they are put in place, Article 8 of the Constitution state how the vetting process should, should be done. And the sitting government leads with the tyranny of numbers. Therefore, the composition of the Ethic and Anti-Corruption Commission will automatically be favored by the sitting government because of the tyranny of numbers. I want to conclude this by bringing the aspect of Chinu Achebe in his book of Things Fall Apart, when he was describing a make it the bad, and I quote, 
When a make the bird learned that man had known to shoot without missing, it also learned to fly without patching. We also want to fly and go to the internationally constituted bodies. Thank you. Opposes will hear your rebuttal. You also have three minutes. Disapprove what he's saying, but I'll fight to death his right to say it. In the words of Jal Nehru, the Indian Prime Minister, we need to discard the habit of thinking that we do not know what we want, yet we actually do. Keep me teach Gideon Nyambari High School. I'm a great antagonist of the motion that's please that in internationally constituted bodies should be assigned to combat corruption globally. Why? And in the words of Conrad, that when you are fighting a monster, there are one or one percent that you become a monster. When you stare into the abyss for long, the abyss will gaze back upon you. Corruption is not only a dreadful disease, but a contagious disease. These international bodies, when they go combating corruption in other countries, they also gain it. Let's take, for example, the United Nations. They are combating corruption in countries that they are kickbacks. Let's take South Africa. The United Nations under its wing, United Nations of Social and Economic Council, went to combat corruption in South Africa, which was in form of racial segregation or the widely known apartheid regime. Not only because they wanted to do it, but South Africa is endowed with the rich resources such as gold and chromium. Look, these international bodies, they have corruption in their systems. How can they come and fight corruption? Yet they have in their own. Look, in the case of the FIFA, Sepp Blatter was found to have maundaloaded the money of the FIFA, and yet you want to tell us these international bodies can come and fight corruption in our countries. And in the work of William Shakespeare, in the play Romeo and Julie, where he said that a good name for a man and woman is in the jaw of their soul. So corruption is something that you start fighting from an individual level before you go to the national level. See, these international bodies, they are not well endowed, but they are controlled by a few countries. In the case of the United Nations, there are five countries which hold the veto power, and yet they misuse their power so that you can come and tell me that they are fighting corruption in our countries. These international bodies have give, been given power, and you can take from me in the book of Alex Mkulu, 30 Years of Bananas, where he quoted this, that power will intoxicate the best heads, as swine to the good hearts. So no man is good or wise enough, or no international body is good enough to be left with unlimited powers. And I remain perfect that corruption should start from ourselves before we go to the national level. I rest my case. Third proposer, you have three minutes. Wisdom is a collection of rare thoughts. And one thing for sure, you can never milk a cow with your hands in the pocket. It has never happened. When somebody tells me that uh, we, we are running away from our sovereignty, one thing that you need to know, my friends, this is the law of the land. And in Article 3 of the sovereignty, it states that, Article, Article 2, sub Article 6, it states that the internationally, the international rules may form part of the Treaty of Kenya under any agreement signed. So as we run for our sovereignty, we must also remember that the international space is also created in our constitution. When you go to the internationally constituted bodies, these are bodies that are not, are not just created. They are being created by an agreement that is written down, by a, a legal binding agreement. So somebody should not tell me that these bodies 
are actually under no reference within our constitution, that when we go for them, we are running away from our sovereignty. Number one, I want to say that these bodies have the combining power, they have the diversity, and they have the neutrality, neutrality that we need in this nation. This nation, as you have known, corruption issues have gathered everywhere in the news. You have always seen this, uh, what we call in quotes, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission being reduced into a mere closed shop where those who want to go against justice, go and buy at a cheap price at the expense of others. You can have several examples of cases that have been dumped and up to date. The NYS scandal is a mystery today. When everyone was appearing before the Public and Accounts Committee, everyone was quoting whatever he stole in quotes, and that is the word that they used. Though there were allegations, the truth is money was found, money was stolen, and there is a question there. Where is the integrity of these our nationally constituted bodies? Another thing, I want to tell you that awareness is very good. Internationally constituted bodies have created awareness. They come to the ground to tell Wanjiku Motua and Otieno that when we want to combat this corruption, what are the legal procedures? What are the things that we need to curb in our society? The ESCC. Where is its stand? Its composition at all does not show us the diversity of this nation. One thing that I want to tell you, let us stand up in, in apps and say, say no to these nationally constituted bodies and go for the internationally constituted bodies. Thank you. Opposition, you have three minutes to respond. Maybe to clarify, we said that corruption is fought by ourselves. The hundred bob that you give to a cop when you have drove recklessly, that is the one that you are saying you need to abandon. The thousand that you give to a principal to occupy a space in a national school, that is the one that you are saying you need to stop and give that money so that it can be used to assist in combating corruption. Like caged animals, we are moving but making no difference. Change is the most inevitable thing in the world, but most of us are unchangeable, and the change will change us. Are we grieving the efforts of our people, the Frelimo that suffered because of us, the Zano that suffered because of us? In fact, these bodies are failed elsewhere. Take the case of Kenya. In 1987, we invited technocrats from China. They failed. They went smiling with our resources. They did nothing about our corruption. Took the case of UNESCO. It has failed in preventing children mistreatment in, in Palestine and Syria. That is, and they are pretending to combat one in German. These are the same people, UNESCO, who are pretending to, read, to have no impact in high tax deductibility in our countries of Africa, and yet they pretend to assist the one of Europeans. I want to show you, IMF itself a body. It did not assist anything. In 2013 February, its leader resigned because of the failures of the same body. Do you think that body can assist us? Guys, can that be able to assist us? You come back to our own home. Can it assist us at any kind of a moment? Come back to countries. We need to flatten our countries so that we move forward. We need to give our judicial system that kind of strength so that they move forward. Example of countries, Tanzania. John Pobe Magufuli did not use any international constituted body to assist him to combat corruption. Over 330 people were sacked from office because of corruption. He used his own power to combat corruptions. Africans were able, let us not grieve our own activities. We are the same people who can move forward and assist Africa. We are the same people who knows our problem, let us solve the problem within us. For the husband cannot invite another husband to solve a problem within the wife. Thank you very much. Final statements now. Proposition, you have one minute. No matter the economic situation of the jungles, lions will never eat grass. I want to say that the internationally constituted bodies are bodies that in their compositions, in most times, you will get that they are composed over diverse different countries. These bodies are diverse and so the leadership itself has a structure. What they need to do and come is to come to the ground. I want to give you an example, Amnesty International. Amnesty International is a body, and recently in Kenya, they work in schools sensitizing them on the effect of human rights as well as corruption as a global issue. 
When somebody tells me that we, we should combat corruption right from here, I don't deny. But one thing I say, we need to look for more powerful bodies to con com combat this corruption. Because this corruption is a global issue. Corruption is a global issue, and we cannot attest to try to say that this thing is localized within our country. That is my word. Thank you. Opposes final statement, you have one minute. External vigilance is the loss of liberty. Let's take what is the essence of our education. Dr. Fred Matianki allocated the education system 120 billion shillings. Then can we invite international bodies so that to come and solve our problems, it means we do not trust in our education system. Then it's better we do away with it. So there is no way we can invite these international bodies to come and solve our internal problems. And that kotowing our problems to the international bodies means we are bringing another disease. That's my point. <laughs> proposers, you were supposed to tell us how local tribunals and the bodies that have been constituted have failed. And I think you've really done your very best, especially the third speaker. That was Evans. I think you've really tried when you gave the examples of how uh, many other institutions have failed. Um, all the way, actually, the three of you are amazing speakers. I must commend that. Very passionate as well. And this goes across as well to the other team. So in terms of your style and presentation, your mastery of language, I saw the Martin Luther's here and a bit of political uh, contest around here. And I think that is commendable for a debate. Nonetheless, you want to any example that you gave. For example, in the uh, Nyambaria School, you give the example of UNESCO, IMF, FIFA, NATO, but there was no at point, there was no point at all that you gave the source that you were crediting this information from. And for that, then you're penalized as well. This goes across as well to Homer Bay as well. All the examples that you gave even of tribunals, when you say, for example, in this country, you want to say which date and by who, all right? Because anybody can say that maybe you just cooked the figures, all right? So you want to really substantiate everything. So in terms of mastery of topic, uh, which affects the coherency of argument, then that was penalized because of that. Nonetheless, that was, that was commendable. Um, Nyambaria, Failed international bodies give us the examples of all the failed international bodies in their cases. I think you mentioned ICC, but you were not trying to punch it home and tell us this is why they have failed. And probably give other cases apart just from Kenya, the Kenyan case. Nonetheless, I think that was a very spirited fight. Let's wait for the results. Straight to the results with the only one point difference. One point. Nyambaria High School. The judges awarded you 71%. Please give them a round of applause. <laughs> Homer Bay School, the judges awarded you 70%. Our winners, therefore, are Nyambaria School. Congratulations to both teams. And remember to give us your feedback on the debate on social media. Hashtag GDC for SDGs. I am Mariam Bishar. And I am Austin Yumbok. Catch you next time. Greatest contest is powered by Blaze by Safaricom, the youth network.